Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today is uh, gaming expert coach Jason Polano. We're going to get into all kinds of different ways about how to make your swimming more fun, I think. Uh, Jason, how's it going? It's going great, Coleman. How are you, bud? I'm doing pretty good. You know, it's Friday. I'm in my my casual attire. Uh, it's the so. cutoff sleeve <laughs> arena polo. <laughs> the, that is the, the Phoenix dopest Champion thing. series. <laughs> oh my goodness, that Out is the polo. dopest shirt I've seen. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a. I like it. It's a good one. Um, and uh, you know, speaking of of great outfits, uh, let's just take a moment to recognize uh, your famous pirate hat and and hairdo. It's it's a really good look. You know, I figure I'm going to talk about game and play, and I might as well look the part. So uh, we represent pirate swimming, and I figure I might as well just uh, make it appropriately deemed with my outfit. <laughs> Perfect. Well, so let's get right into it. Um, let, well, let's let's get a little background on on you, on your swimming history, and and how you got to where you are today. Um, how how did you get into swimming? Yeah, so, I mean, like a lot of uh, current and former swimmers, I wound up joining a summer league team and uh, the Bedford Surf Swim Team in DFW, uh, Texas, and probably stuck around summer league swimming a little too long, and that made the transition to club swimming, you know, more arduous, and it was a bit of a shell shock, but uh, I swam for a couple club teams growing up, uh, Mid-Cities Arlington, I got coached by Daniel Jow, who was kind of like my my sensei with all of this gamification type of practice stuff. And then I wound up swimming at a small division two school in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. Uh, I went to Washtenaw Baptist university and met my wife there, graduated with a degree in biology and secondary education. And I left the state of Arkansas as fast as humanly possible. And I went back to God's country and uh, I tricked the school district into hiring me to be their head swim coach and uh, high school science teacher. And then I've been here ever since. So I've spent six years here in Granbury ISD and uh, our, our lone swimming claim to fame is that Dana Volmer went to high school in Granbury and she holds every single girl's record. <laughs> and I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that now we have boys records that are faster than Dana's records. So hey. that's we're we're growing slowly. Yeah. What, <laughs> what, what's the most surprising record? If, if, if you, if you know it by heart, if you can remember, what's the most surprising record Dana Vollmer still holds? I mean, she, she held the hundred butterfly state record up until about two years ago uh, for, for the state of Texas. And that's like right around a 51, 51, three, I think. Um, but yeah. I mean, like I had, yeah, I had a girl a couple of years ago, tw- go 23, five in the 53, which sounds like it's really awesome for a high school kid. Except Dana went a twenty-two eight. Like, <laughs> it's yeah, we're gonna get a record this year. We're gonna take <laughs> down one of the relay records. I'm confident. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Um, so, so you're coaching in Dallas now, <clears throat> um, just up the road from me in Austin, and uh, you've made a name for yourself as as being a coach who who tries to gamify swimming. Um, where did this start for you? How did this gamifying journey begin and where has it taken you since? So we've always kind of tried to just make things engaging and exciting. Um, my, my other job is that I am the, uh, Granbury ISD instructional technology coordinator. So I'm not actually in a classroom anymore. I was teaching biology for about, uh, five years and then made this transition over to this job. So my job is to just basically bring innovation to classrooms and it's, it might be game design, it might be coding and robotics, it might be, you know, podcasting or vlogging, but it's, it's just to kind of be on the cutting edge. So we've, we've tried to bring that to our high school swim program, and I, I like to use them kind of as my guinea pigs. So if I'm doing something in a fourth grade classroom, I'll experiment with my high school swimmers first. And it really kind of took off right around quarantine this year. So uh, I was working from home, which isn't a big deal for me because I'm tech, but my wife was also working from home. She's a, she was a sixth grade English teacher last year. 
and she was having such a hard time engaging kids and she was not able to get them logged into a zoom meeting like, she, like they wanted to. And she wasn't able to get them turning in their assignments like they would be if they were in a classroom. And I started to realize like students, athletes, teachers, administrators, there's, there's the threat of growing apathetic with all of this is going on. And especially for a sport like swimming where we are so go, go, go. And we have been for years on years on years, all of a sudden our kids have this kind of sense of freedom where they don't have to go to practice. They don't have to wake up at five o'clock. They don't have to stay up late doing homework. And my big fear as a coach is that kids are going to find that they like that and that that's a comfortable, a comfortable place to be. And I was watch, I'd watch my wife teach at the dining room table and she would do these things called gim kits, which are kind of like if you ever played Kahoot in high school or it's kind of like a, like a trivia game. And when she was getting like, you know, 10, 12 assignments turned in per class period, normally she'd have these gim, gim kits and she'd have 90% attendance. Like kids were willing to wake up at eight o'clock to play a game and they were still learning and they were still hitting learning teaks and, you know, they were doing the things that they would be doing. Otherwise they were just doing it in a more fun platform. And I just started thinking, how can I do that with my kit, with my swimmers? Because let's be real. Our, our kids are smart and they know that what's going to happen in the next year is probably not going to be what's happened in years past. So for them, I need to find something that's engaging, exciting, and worth their time. And it might not be that an end of season meet is going to be what motivates them anymore. And it might be that something like, hey, we're going to go into practice today and we're going to play Mario Kart. And how that's going to look is completely different than anything we've ever done. Um, but I think getting them hooked back on swimming is going to be way more difficult than it was before COVID hit and before quarantine happened. So, so are you only doing this with swimming? Are you doing it? Are you trying to incorporate this technology into classrooms as well of, of, of getting games out there and accessible for students and teachers? For sure. It's, it was in, it was in education <laughs> before it was in swimming. Hell, Mary Poppins was talking about gamifying things in 1960. <laughs> So it's not a new concept. I'm just trying to take what education is doing and what some of our classrooms are doing with house systems and turning things into competitions and creating narratives for what they're doing and trying to apply it to our pool. And I don't think what I'm doing is, you know, I think a lot of other coaches are doing it, but maybe not in a, in the organized kind of fashion that we are right now. And I thought the buy-in was going to be really hard for my kids. I thought that kind of explaining to them, what we're going to be doing is not traditional was going to kind of get them to shut down more. And we had one zoom meeting and I talked about it and I had some great feedback. So um, admittedly, I have not done a single one of these practices with them yet just because of uh, governing bodies of Texas sports and how high school coaches are and are not allowed to uh, coach their kids right now. And the limitations on that and combined with pool availability. Um, but August 12th, we're going to have some fun. And I'm looking forward to it. So, so uh, to give us some background, you know, what was your, what did, what did practices look like for you guys before quarantine? I think it was equal parts, skill, <laughs> drill, and kill. You know, we, we needed to, in our area, we don't have a club program that feeds into our high school. Uh, we've got a couple of kids that have now taken that adventure and are driving, you know, an hour, 45 minutes to an hour to club sites. But um, for the most part, I get a lot of kids that when they're freshmen don't know all four strokes and we need to kind of get them up to speed pretty quickly. So for the first six weeks, it would be, you know, this is what swimming is. I've got a great assistant coach who probably was more on the cutting edge of all this gamification stuff before I was and Dean Carter. And she would get those kids up to speed while I would be working with our, you know, more advanced kids. And it would be, you know, traditional practices. We do a lot of color wheel stuff. Uh, Urbana check color sets and we would try to just make sure that we are hitting volume and hitting intensity and all those things that coaches are traditionally doing but the more and more I've listened to coaches this quarantine the more I'm realizing you know numbers are becoming far less important and a lot of coaches are saying that I was listening to Arthur Albiera the other day on a BSN's podcast and he was saying he's like you know I used to be really focused on you know weekly volume limits. And I used to be really focused on, you know, stroke cycles and things like that. And now I'm starting to see the art of swimming and what does a kid look like? And I think that we can kind of combine those skills, drills and kills and start to throw some thrills in there too. 
and get our kids really excited about it again. Yeah. I, I certainly like that idea. This, this makes me want to go swim. I want to play Mario Kart in my pool. Uh, you know, Coleman, <laughs> we have some great pancakeries around here as well. <laughs> so three hour drive up the road isn't too bad. It might sounds worth it at this point. Um, so, so let me get this straight. You, you only coach high school. Is that like during high school season? Is that right? That is correct. Texas is technically a, a year round sport for mm-hmm. swimming. So I can coach from August to May. Uh, the big thing with that is the UIL has the eight hour rule, which means that I am limited to eight hours of coaching time with my kids outside of the school day. So even if we were you know, practicing six hours outside of the school day per week, I would only be able to coach club for two hours a week. So it's just, it's not possible for one person to do it. Mm -hmm. That's okay. That's interesting. Uh, Yeah. So I I remember moving to Texas and I volunteer on a club team here in Austin. And I remember there would be high school swimmers, you know, in Missouri where I'm from uh, our high school season was winter, fall, fall or winter. And, uh, and so, you know, we would practice, three and a half months out of the year with our high school team. And then it's club team the rest of the year. And I remember in Texas, you know, you'd, you'd see high school kids getting out in August and you'd see high school kids getting out in April. And I was like, well, how long is their season? So that's really yeah. interesting that it's a grind. It's a grind. We go, I mean, our first day of practice is August 12th and then championship meets are usually middle of February. Mm-hmm. And then you'll have your club kids that will continue through like short course championship meets and then straight into long course. And we'll still have practices from February to May. They just look a little different and um, they're not quite as, you know, formal and organized, more, more games, more dry land, more weightlifting, things like that in the off season. Sure. Yeah. Which, uh, which sounds great. I don't know. The off season was always my favorite part of the year because that's when you do fun stuff. <laughs> that's right. Um, but, but now it, it sounds like we're, we're, we're going to be doing some more fun stuff in the end season. So let's, let's get into specifics of, of some of these games. What, you know, if you're going to play Mario Kart with your swimmers at a swim practice, obviously you're not talking about bringing a GameCube into practice. You're talking about something in the pool. What, what is, what is Mario Kart for swim practice look like? Yeah. And I think my big thing is, I want to take a traditional practice and just provide game elements to it, whether that's points, badges, leaderboards, um, strategy, trying to get kids to, you know, go into co-op mode and they're working together. There's a lot of different things that make video games like Minecraft and Fortnite and all of those things that kids are staying up until two o'clock in the morning doing. We can take elements from that and apply it to swimming. So um, I think we're going to, I think I'm going to share my screen, right, Coleman? And then I'm going to, uh, go through a couple of the kind of how this works, right? Yeah, please do. Let's get into it. Um, I think, I think you need to give me the ability to share. All right. Let's see here. Multiple participants can share. Uh, does that do anything? That did it. All right, cool. So if you're listening via podcast, uh, you might want to, you might, you might want to come check this out on YouTube. Uh, Coach Jason Polano is going to share his screen with me and uh, give us some some in depth examples and numbers of how to gamify your swim practice. All right, so kind of the the concept behind this is that I just want to take some race pace stuff at the end of practice over the course of about you know a week or two, and we want to try to give kids some opportunities to feel what race pace is and provide some strategy to what they're doing in an effort to try to win. Right. So uh, how I envision this is every day for two weeks, we're going to do 375s at the end of a practice and they're going to be for time. They're going to be recorded. You have a goal time that you're trying to hit, but your goal time one day may be different than your goal time a second day. Uh, And it all depends on kind of in Mario Kart when you're driving and you hit a cube and you get your power up, what that power up looks like. So um, here's round one. And these randomly generate for you inside of my spreadsheet. And if you have a red shell, That means that you can hit another swimmer and their goal time is going to be adjusted. So that's actually going to get faster. So here, if I were to try to attack Johnny Bravo, his goal time was a 48.33. If I attack him, now it's a 47.8. So uh, for the kids, as we're doing this, they can kind of target people and say, hey, you know, you're ahead of me. I'm going to try to target you, make it more difficult. 
if they have a mushroom, the mushroom actually makes their goal time slower. So uh, they feel that boost from it. Okay. If they have a banana, they have to start from, uh, from a wall flip. So kind of like they're kind of like peeling out a little bit and mm -hmm. they don't get the good push off from the wall. Uh, the, the triple mushroom is going to be the same thing as the regular mushroom, but just kind of more. You're going to have a, a greater power up from that. I think it's one and a half seconds instead of half a second. Okay. Uh, same thing with the red shells is now when I attack <laughs> Charlie Brown, yeah. Charlie Brown's goal time is going to be affected by, I think it's like one and a half seconds. So uh, a whole lot. Uh, by the way, for listeners, he, he Jason's got a spreadsheet here and all the characters are names of cartoon characters and and i love it it's 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 really fun to look at so again if you're listening you might want to go check out the youtube video uh so the blue shell is going to specifically target just like in mario kart we're going to go after whoever's in first place so uh the first place person right now is wild e coyote <laughs> so i would just kind of click and drag on wild e coyote and mm -hmm. now his goal time is going to change. Uh, but the hard part about that blue shell is however many blue shells there are, Wile E. Coyote's uh, goal time is going to be adjusted from each one of those. So um, All right. a, a star is you get to use fins on one of them. The bullet Ooh. is you get to use fins on all of them. Oh, all right. So kind yeah. of some game changers there. And every day it's a different power up. So if I were to come into day two, now Yogi Bear has a, a star instead of the red shell. So keeps things interesting for your kids. There's a little bit of a mystery component that video games incorporate. Like, I don't know what my power up's going to be on day mm -hmm. two. Um, and the nice part is like when I come over and zoom out just a bit, when I come over and I look at the scores, like Johnny Bravo had a bad day too, man. Like that was a rough day. So did Charlie Brown. So did Bugs Bunny. So did Scooby-Doo. Just like in Mario Kart, like those, those bad rounds don't apply to the next round. Like I'm not going into negative points. I get a round score. So just like in Mario, like first place gets like 40 points and then 35 and then 32, 31, blah, 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 blah. Same thing here. And that's the only thing that's going to go forward. So there's kind of this, there's this concept of, you know, easy failure involved too, where our kids aren't going to be demoralized after day one. They're like, yeah, I'm down, but Hey, tomorrow I might get the bullet and I'm going to be in first place and get all my points back. Which, which, you know, I, Obviously, this is just a game. This is to have fun. This is to get swimmers engaged. But I'm going to take it one step further. And I don't know if this is the point, but you know, if you're if you're at a championship meet at a sectionals at a at a junior nationals as a club swimmer, you have a bad day one. It's not always easy to get up and say, "Hey, I had a bad first day, but I can have a good second day. I can have a you know have a bad prelims. I can have a good finals, or vice versa." Uh, and, and this seems like something that's directly applicable to telling a kid, hey, just because you had one bad day doesn't mean you're going to have a bad week. Yeah. And I, Coleman, you, know, you and I are about the same age. And I think we both grew up playing Super Mario, uh, Super Mario Brothers. And like, if I lose on World 4-1 400 times, but I beat it once, like I beat it, you know, like it's, it's that concept of I can keep trying and keep trying and keep trying. I just need to be process driven and focused on Princess Peach and not focused on the 400 times that I didn't, uh, I didn't beat the level. Absolutely. And yeah, I think that that's, it's like you said, kids need to almost be programmed differently and they live in a more high pressure society than we probably like to recognize with how many times our kids are, you know, they have to pass this test to go on to the next grade level. They have to get this minimum score to get into the college of their choice. And I think we need to look at swimming and say, hey, we're losing a lot of kids to games, games like football, games like basketball, games like soccer, because there's not this like one overarching moment that defines your season. If you get COVID right before a championship meet, if you get the flu, it's just not going to be conducive to your mental health as a swimmer, or you're not going to be as, you know, geared, geared up and pumped towards the next season because you didn't see that instant gratification. And that's what our kids crave. Like if they don't get a hundred likes on their TikTok within a minute, they're going to take it down. And that's just kind of the, the society that we live in. I, I think you're a hundred percent spot on Coleman. Uh, yeah. And that, and, and that's interesting too, because this is, that's, that's something that, you know, everyone just dealt with. We got, we had, we had no NCAAs. Uh, we had a lot of sectional meets canceled. We had a lot of, of club championship meets canceled. 
um, you know, now our summer season, the summer season's pretty much scrapped, um, you know, and we've had to find, we as a swimming community have had to find different ways to say, Hey, you know, th- this is, this is how I'm going to reward myself. This is the gratification that I'm going to earn and see for myself. Um, and another thing is, is, you know, if, if you're looking at the spreadsheet, it's, it's, it's pretty in depth. Jason has done his homework. He's certainly played Super Mario Kart a few times, been around the block and, and it's, it's a lot and it's awesome. But, but I think the bigger picture is, you know, if, if you don't have the tech savvy, if you don't, if you never played Super Mario Kart, A, you should probably try it. But, it, but B, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the, you can simplify this into, hey, let's do a set every day. Let's change it up. You know, dr- draw, uh, draw lots out of a hat and say, oh, you're going to get fins on this one. You're going to get paddles. Ooh, you're going to add a second, drop a second to your time. Um, I, th- I think the point is let's, let's gamify it. Let's make swimming fun and, uh, and, and let's get our kids engaged so that they are feeling a day to day victory or defeat, teach them how to fail. And then the teach next day how to fail. they can have another chance to get up and chase that victory. Teach kids how to fail. Exactly. And Coleman, like you said, it, I give all this out for free. So in education, there's a website called teachers pay teachers and I despise teachers pay teachers. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to try to monetarily profit off of other kids success and other kids work. So I give all these out for free and I've got a YouTube channel where um, I'll give you the links to them. You would click on it and then it prompts you to make your own copy. You make your own copy and that copy lives inside of uh, your Google drive forever and not mine. But like you said, like our kids are smart. Our kids know that what is going to motivate them this year is not what motivated them last year. Like I had that zoom with my kids and I told them, I want to be as transparent and open and honest with you guys as possible. And the first question that they asked was, are we going to have an end of year meet and being transparent? I'm like, Hey guys, I don't know. But my focus this year is that you love coming to the pool. Whereas before we kind of sacrificed that joy of coming to the pool for hey, it's going to be worth it in the end. We don't know that. And I'm not going to tell a kid it's going to be worth it in the end. But I also told them, if we love coming to the pool, we're going to get better at a more expedited rate. Like it's going to catalyze your growth, your learning as an athlete, as a person. And then we can move forward from there. Let's focus on each day, one day at a time, loving being there. And that's what our kids deserve. Our kids deserve to come to a pool and love it. Um, And we can do things that are going to suck. Like I've got a I've got a set on my YouTube channel and it's 10 200s and the focus is to be um, back half, back half exclusive. So um, every, every send off, I pick three kids randomly. I've got a random number generator and I pick three kids and those three kids I'm going to time nobody else. It's kind of on the honor system. And I tell them, Hey, there's 30 of you guys. I'm going to pick three. You've got a one in 10 chance of being the person that's picked but like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to keep doing two hundreds until we get to, you know, 50 points. You get one point every time somebody successfully back halves and I catch them. So at that point we're doing traditional training. We're doing 10, 200 red. We've got an interval. We're doing the things that we need to do, but we're just doing them in a more engaging way. And a lot of coaches I've talked to, they're like, that's, you know, that's extrinsic motivation. I'm like, yeah, so is an end of season meet. So is the IMX system for USA swimming. <laughs> so are all of the the name badges you get when you qualify for a sectional meet and all those things like, but if we apply appropriate game mechanics, we can get kids intrinsically motivated just like they would be if they were playing Minecraft at two o'clock in the morning. Hi Coleman's roommate. So that I, again, I think that's an excellent point. Um, I think the, the best teams you see are the teams that have a culture where where the the athletes are motivated to come every day and to enjoy every day that they're at a pool and i think far too often we hear about club teams that you know or club swimmers maybe even college swimmers that are motivated by this end of season meet and so they don't really enjoy the process and then they get to that end of season meet and it doesn't go their way and and they're asking they're left asking why you know why did i spend all this time and energy swimming's not fun. Uh, but that's nature. normal. Like <laughs> as a coach, how can I tell a kid, Hey, yeah, you practiced 
10,000 minutes this season uh, for nothing. You know, that's, that's not the message that we want to convey to our kids either. I get that hundred percent. Yeah. And, uh, and if you don't go and, and if you're, if, if your motivation is to go that best time, then you don't go for that best time. It's hard. Um, but you know, if, if, if you have games once a week, twice a week, every day, or, or you gamify it, uh, like, like you've given several examples of, you know, then it becomes a little bit easier to say, Hey, you didn't get that result exactly what you wanted, but you had a lot of fun, a lot of fun chasing it. And, and Hey, there's always next year. And that's my hope is that my kids kind of see it without me having to give them that, that pep talk and that Mm -hmm. they see like, you know what? It's not going to look like it did last year. Likely. I mean, I know nothing about what the UIL is going to do, but you know, I feel like if we can, if we can provide that opportunity for our kids where they do love the sport and we, I think it's going to increase our retainment rate because we lose so many kids and we lose so many minorities in the sport of swimming because they have opportunities elsewhere. If they have an opportunity to compete on a daily basis like this, we're going to keep more kids. Um, did you watch the Michael Jordan documentary series? On oh yeah. And that was a big piece of this too. And when I met with my captains in the, in quarantine to just kind of talk about what do you guys want? I said, I think we need to work on competition. I think we need to make kids competitive. And that we did one day, my captains came up with the idea, Brady Wilmoth, shout out. He said, let's do a zoom around the room. And they had a $5 uh, Starbucks gift card. And we had our kids on a zoom meeting and it was a, all right, you guys have five minutes to collect as many of these items as possible. And they were household items. So they weren't going anywhere. It was like spaghetti strainers and it was uh, a beret or it was a hair tie. And it was just a whole list of things. And they were just running around the house. And it's things like that, that we're going to keep kids with. And it's things like 10, 200s that we're going to make kids better with, but why can't we do both? Yeah. Okay. I, that's a great point. And I think, it's, it's totally possible, totally doable. And it starts on the front end with the coaches. The coaches have to be the ones carrying this out to athletes, getting athlete feedback. What do they want to do? And, and, uh, and I think that trickle down, we'll see some positive results. Um, Jason, if, if people do want to come to your websites, you mentioned YouTube channel, give it all to me. How, how can, how can people reach Jason Polano, get this super Mario Kart spreadsheet and start gamifying their swim workouts. Yeah, Coleman, I, uh, at coach Polano on Instagram, I'm only like, you know, 8,500 followers away from getting to push out links on my story. I'm looking forward to that. Yes. 10,000. Um, and then I'm also presenting at the ask a cyber world clinic this year. So I'll have a presentation where I give all of my stuff out. Um, and I'm willing to give it out as well to anyone that asks, but, um, at coach Polano on Instagram, I started a Facebook group called gamify swimming and I'll give you the link if you want to put it in show notes or descriptions or anything like that. But, um, that's kind of my, my side hustle right now is trying to get a community of coaches and, and not even like just provide content, but collaborate where sometimes I'll put ideas out there to a bigger group, the swim coach idea exchange on Facebook, and I don't get a whole lot of feedback from it. And I'm not putting things out there just to talk. I I really want to talk about it in depth and like, Hey, this is what we did, but what could we do next time? Like, what could we do? Like, how could I incorporate, uh, like oil slicks inside of Mario Kart next time? How could I, how can I make it so that if I'm in first place, I never get the bullet. So I, I want to have that collaboration piece. And that's what we're seeing in that, uh, gamify swim coaching page. Mm. I, man, I just really want to play super Mario Kart and go swimming. Now those are, those are my two takeaways. It'd be great. Um, well, Jason, as, as, as we close out this podcast, do you have any parting thoughts or thoughts for moving forward um, on this topic of gamifying swimming? So how can we expect our kids to remember what we do if we don't make what we do memorable? And that's a big saying in education. If, if your kids can't get their eyes off of Snapchat during your class, the phone and the kids aren't the problem you are as the teacher. So, you know, I just encourage coaches take this time away from the pool. If you are away from the pool, take this time to, you know, hone your sword, add new tools, join the swim coach gamification group on Facebook and follow me on Instagram. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, there you go, folks. That's the solution to all your problems. Gamify your swim workouts. Follow Jason Polano on Instagram. I'm gonna link. I'm gonna link all your stuff uh, in the description of this podcast so you can get all of his ideas and start start making your swim practices a little more fun. Thanks a lot for your time, Jason. Thank you, Coleman. You've been listening to the Swim Swam Podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam Podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.